A sad reality of American society is the dependence on drugs that plagues our country. In 2018, over 30 million people were using illegal drugs. Now, these illegal drugs ruin livelihoods, they break up families, and they can even cause death in some circumstances. The epidemic only seems to be getting worse. However, we're about to meet Stephen, who is able to get clean and turn his life around, finding freedom from addiction. He ended up emerging from the side of the house holding a gun with sweet treats like these popping up all over the stores and a ton of holiday events to attend. But if we take just a few steps over this site, not so nice. This is the former Haltman pool. As you can see, it is closed up. This class has elements that go well beyond the classroom walls. Elemental started this week in North Quad. You can check out the class at elementalprotection.org. But these piles, they're not done growing just yet. Or as you can see, we are just now leaving the residence halls. Now this is something a lot of students take to see if Fall State is where they want to call home. Life is full of ups, downs, and everything in between. It's a long journey that can sometimes feel unbearable, leading many people to suffer from anxiety, which is the leading mental illness in the United States. Walking along Milwaukee Avenue in the Avondale neighborhood, there's a lot of abandoned buildings. But for one community, closed up spaces means opening opportunities, one wall at a time. Lynn Bossa gets to do what she loves every day at her art studio in Avondale, The Corner Project. But from her window storefront, there's not much to see just yet. What do I see here? How, what could I do with who I am and with where I am that's relevant? to this street and what I saw is a lot of vacant storefront and um, I just kind of said I'm just going to build from the street up. Building from the street up through art. Me doing my work in my own community actually means a lot to me. David Orozco is the lead painter for a new mural going up at 2901 North Milwaukee, a formerly abandoned building. When artists come in and move in, and take over and start doing some of the murals on the walls. The communities tend to flip over, do a 360 immediately. They end up thriving. It's happening because these street artists and graffiti writers and muralists all have gotten together. Everything for the mural has been donated by the community, but organizers still need to raise $2,500 to finish the project. It's been truly amazing to see so much of the community come out and support so many amazing artists, so many people that just give a, a helping hand. It's really amazing to see. The completed mural will be an exact replica of the same business from the 1920s, showing a community that once thrived and is still alive. This area right here, there's all sorts of fascinating things that are locked within the bricks of these walls, and that's worth highlighting just as much as anything else. Dan Pogoshelsky has studied Avondale and co-authored a book on its ever-evolving history. You have a working class neighborhood where there's an array of many different ethnicities. This neighborhood, like others, is a shifting kaleidoscope where different people's join and then they leave. Pogoshelsky says mom and pop stores going out of business led to these abandoned storefronts, but new building owner Mark Kappelman isn't leaving. It is a very cool, quirky, funky, eclectic neighborhood. And I think that's what people like about it. It's just, we need to fill up these storefronts and make it vibrant again. With the new space, he plans to make it a 21 unit building for commercial use on bottom and residential on top. All these empty storefronts are just wasted opportunity and they're, they're potential. They're just sites of potential. We're just excited to be a part of it. Trying to bring life to this um, community here. Why not make something of it and just do this for as long as I can? This area is just as cool, just as significant as any other area. And what we're all trying to do in our own way is trying to highlight and expose that. Exposing a community spirit of coming together to paint change. In Avondale, Esther Bauer, Medill reports. Lakeisha Barber always desired to own her own home. It's something that I always dreamed of doing. The only person that I ever known to own a house and you know in my family was my grandmother growing up. Now following in her grandma's footsteps of making that dream a reality. Today we are doing construction on flooring and siding and 
So everything. Everything centered around Habitat for Humanity's mission. Creating a city where um, everyone has a decent place to live. While these homes are still under construction, if we take just a few steps over, the homes behind me have already been completed with new homeowners moved in. We chose West Pullman because of the rich history that it has, as well as some strong assets. Um, unfortunately, it is uh, vulnerable to decline due to um, uh, disinvestment. So we are here making very timely investments in this community to help build and build it up. Future buyers take homeowner education classes and actually build the homes they'll eventually buy. No experience required. No, <laughs> not at all. I use a saw. They mm. <laughs> show you how to use a saw and power tools and the correct way to do it. And if you mess up, it's like, you know what? Go get another one. We're going to try this again. These homes will be finished by the start of summer with an added value money can't buy. Before you even know it, you're looking at your house or your apartment a whole nother way because you've actually either installed that part or you've seen it installed. Installing a new mindset of home ownership. I'm just believing yourself and just know that you can do it if you put in the work and you focus on your goals and everything that you set out for yourself, you can achieve them. For fashion designer Jessica Pollo, <laughs> designing by the books never made sense. I'm a, not a conventional designer. For me, it's a crazy idea to first draw and then try to force, to extract this design of the paper and convert in a, in a dress. It's crazy for me. Taking her unconventional approach and launching Biotico. From handbags to dresses and custom couture, she focuses on getting to know her materials. I first think in the material. I really connect with this. And those materials are anything but ordinary because a lot of Biotico's products are made out of what we like to consider as trash, like this chip bag. Something that every day we can see as trash, even you can reuse. In nature, nothing is trash. Everything can be, you know, like reuse uh, with another value. The small actions can help to the future. Biotico's small actions are helping an even bigger problem because fashion is the second most polluting industry in the world. But there's even more to the mission. We don't think that uh, clothes are sustainable. It's just be uh, organic or recycled. She hires workers with disabilities to clean and repurpose the materials. The problem with fashion is that it's not only an environmental problem, it's also about social and economical problems because it's one of the industries that you, 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 they work like in a very bad conditions with the people. Giving people who may not find work a movement to be a part of. If you, we don't valorate the time or the life of this worker, we are just, I don't know, maybe blinds, blind consumer opening people's eyes to how fashion can help the world, one small stitch at a time. In Buenos Aires, Esther Bauer, Madill Report.